Hello, uh, my name is Dermot Ryan. I do the Kinsale Heritage Walks every morning. Now, this is a special week here because Friday is the anniversary of the sinking of the Lusitania, eh, which is one of the major disasters of the First War. It caused a, a great uh, anti-German propaganda wave in both the States and in England. And we just like to remind you because the, on Friday at two o'clock, members of the History Society will visit the graves in our local church of St. Maltos and say some prayers for the poor people who died. Some of them are buried in Kinsale, most of them in Carcaver and Cove. The Lusitania was one of the, I suppose, one of the most luxurious ships that we had uh, in the world at the time, the Lusitania and the Mauritania. And they went uh, right across the Atlantic. Uh, they were very luxurious. The, the Lusitania was uh, claimed to be the flagship of the Cunard fleet uh, with more luxury in, and anything else in it than any of the other ones. Now, if you want uh, to join us any morning, the tourist office right on the edge of the harbour is the place to go. And we show you some of the photographs. This is uh, one of the ad actually for the Cunard line of going from mainly from New York and Boston, going to Liverpool. It used also a call from time to time to Cork Harbour. Um, unfortunately, is in this last voyage, it fell foul of the German submarine, the U-20. And instead of being one of the monarchs of the sea, uh, along with the Mauritania, it became the greatest disaster to, to strike. This notice appeared in the paper just around that time. It was a warning from the German embassy, warning travellers to beware that the state of war between Germany and the Allies and that the Germans re uh, regarded now any shipping bringing supplies into England, even from the States, flying the flag of Great Britain or any of its allies, they were liable to be attacked. There were some famous people on the ship. This is Vanderbilt, you know, the greatest millionaire at the time. Famous Corkman, um, the great art collector, who was also rumoured to be bringing back some art from the States, never proven. Uh, we had the captain was Captain Turner, a man of great experience, very unflappable, a bit remote from, he wasn't a great man for the captain's table in that, but he was able to do his job very well. This is the departure of the Lusitania from the Cunard Quay in the States. You can see all the, the cabs there, like the taxis of long ago that had brought the people down to, and their families waving to them away on their voyage. Unfortunately, they were sailing into what was declared the German submarine war zone. Uh, they had threatened to, as we said, to attack any ships and they were all over the place, even up there in between Ireland and England, up by, by Liverpool itself. Uh, Churchill was the Lord of the Admiralty at the time, very determined man, as you probably know, um, didn't have a whole lot of uh, faith in the in the ability of the Germans to create to create any great disaster, but unfortunately, he didn't heed any warnings. Um, in back in Kinsale, the town was a great army town and a navy town, and this is our war memorial just to remind us that while the people died in the Lusitania, Kinsale people were dying at the same time. Um, people died. They put up memorials in the churches and that, and they are remembered every year on the 11th of November. The Army Barracks, of course, was a great place, along with Charles Fort for recruiting. A, a world totally apart from the luxury of the Lusitania that was sailing past. Here we have one of the, the lounges there with the beautiful ceilings, and the, one of the ladies there on the left dressed for dinner. And they had electric lifts that unfortunately stuck um, when the torpedo uh, struck and destroyed the electrical system. This is a, a menu of what it was like. This is only a second class menu. And you had salmon, you had roast beef, uh, boiled turkey, all sorts of nice things uh, for the passengers. Um, they could relax then there and enjoy the sea breeze in the, the verandas on the, on the ship itself. The captain, as I say, was a bit remote from the passengers, but he he saw his job was simply to get the ship from New York up to Liverpool. 
Meanwhile, the passengers were relaxing at time. It was just coming up to around two o'clock. Some of them had finished lunch. Uh, the people with small children, the nannies had put the children um, to sleep down in the lower caravan in cabins. The orchestra at that time, actually, it was a, in an innovation. They played music right through the meals so that you had a you had sort of music in the background all the time. Uh, about maybe two miles away from the old head at the time was this man, Rich Edward Twice. He was the skipper of a great fishing boat. And he was one of the first men actually after the disaster happened. And unfortunately, as you'll see later on, he was deprived actually of bringing the people into Kinsale because the British Navy took over and took most of the survivors into Cove. And that's why you have this memorial erected in Cove in memory of the disaster of the Lusitania. Here we have uh, the two captains involved. You have Walter Scheiger, the German captain of the U-20 on the left, and of course, Turner again. And they were closing on one another. Uh, this is the U-20. And um, it came to grief later on in, in the, on the coast of Holland. Back in the Lusitania, everybody was relaxed and celebrating. Some of them were preparing, packing their bags for landing at Liverpool at the early the next morning. And suddenly they saw the track of a torpedo coming towards the ship. The ship itself was sailing um, slightly underpowered. It was, it was saving coal, but the torpedo hit it there. You can see it amidships. This is obviously a painting um, based on the counts of the survivors. The people rushed to the lifeboats. The, the crew were very calm, apparently. And they got the people on the lifeboats and the children and the women and that. But unfortunately, the ship sank terribly quickly. 20 minutes from the time the torpedo hit it, the ship toppled over. And you can see there the davits on top. The boats were dropped into the water. Uh, some of the boats were crushed. That's why the death rate, you had almost 1,200 people died there in the water because there was no way, maybe a more dramatic photograph here you have of the people trying to escape as the end of the ship just went under the, under the waves. It's a bit ironic that this man could have been the captain of the Lusitanian that day. He was actually, Doe was his name, and his family lived there quite close to the old head in Gallastone, but he had been replaced and it was uh, his place was taken by Turner. Then naturally, it became a great propaganda thing. The newspapers had no photographs, but they had these drawings there showing Cork and Kinsale and Cove and the ship sinking. Back in Kinsale, this is the boat again, the Wanderer, the one next to the pier that brought in some of the bodies. There were five bodies landed in Kinsale by the Arco fishermen. And there's the man himself. And he, he was very bitter. He had taken a, some, over like 130 people on board his boat and he was forced to transfer them all to a British Navy boat. And he claimed afterwards that some of the survivors would, would not have died on the way to Cove if they had been brought into Kinsale. In Cove, there was a mass burial um, for over a number of days. And there you have the, the clergy you have the army on the right hand side. They had carried the coffins from the town right up to the cemetery up at the back of Cove itself. Children, unfortunately, the, the great tragedy, they maybe they were oblivious of the whole thing. You have children in Cove actually playing in the lifeboats from the Lusitania that had been towed up to Cork Harbour. The propaganda war went on because uh, the newspapers especially the English newspapers and some of the New York and Boston ones as well, they tried to bring home to people what it was like trying to uh, climb on to upturn lifeboats that had been torn apart by the wash of the sea. This was a rather dramatic painting. This is the, on the left-hand side, the wanderer that had picked up all the people uh, in, and the lifeboats trying to escape from the side of the ship. More of the disasters trying to paint a picture and to stir up anti-German feeling. The New York Times had it wrong at the start. It had the number uh, 1,260 dead and it, two torpedoes. That was the rumor because there was a second explosion. And ever since then, 
the great mystery, what caused the second explosion? Uh, the German answer was that it was explosives in the cargo of the Lusitania. Uh, the alternative uh, theory is that it was the boilers exploded from the pressure in the ship, but whatever the ship sank totally against expected times. The, the Turner had thought he could beach it on the ground at the old head, but it never made it. Back again, the coffins were still being interred in Cove. When this man took over a uh, Horgan, he was the coroner for Cork County, and he decided that it was his right and his duty to hold an inquest on what happened. Uh, Captain Turner was summoned to the inquest, which was held in Kinsale in this building. This is the interior of the courthouse, uh, the present museum. And up there in the in the chair, the, the coroner sat there and Turner stood on the floor in front of him to give his evidence. Now, the verdict was of willful murder against the emperor and the crew of the submarine. And it then straight away it became an official propaganda campaign to get people to join the army. Uh, they were ones attacking the, the Kaiser with all the ghostly bodies of the children that died on the ship. It was a special campaign to get Irishmen to join the British army to get revenge for the Lusitania. This was an unusual piece of propaganda. It started off as a German medal uh, showing uh, on the left hand one of people uh, queuing up and they're obviously Americans with the hats. And inside in the ticket office, there's a skeleton selling their tickets. In other words, they were all doomed to die. And on the right hand side, the other side of the medal, it shows the ship, by the way, sinking under the weight of cargo of guns and shells and everything else. Now, this medal was taken then by the British and copied. And it was used as a propaganda thing saying this was the German authorities glorifying the killing of, of the people of the old head. This is one of the, of the remains of the Lusitania. This is at the museum in Liverpool, one of the propellers. This is a second one. This is in, in the States. It's in the grounds of a hotel, actually, there. Um, a third one was melted down uh, to make golf clubs, believe it or not. And the other one is still on the ship. In Kinsale, this is the man, I suppose, with the closest connection, a man called uh, Charles um, Scannell. He lived out there beyond the town, Minan Bridge. He survived, actually, and he went to live in New York afterwards. Naturally, the, the newspapers were quick to get human interest stories. This little child here, her parents died, but they have a her photograph superimposed on the coffins and the funeral. And they had the two gentlemen on the left-hand side, one was a reporter, and they were actually trying to raise money, by the way, on her behalf. Um, so that she could be adopted and looked after by somebody and even hired a nanny to, to look after her for a while. Churchill, in the meantime, of course, was claiming that had nothing to do with him. Uh, he was blameless and he tried to pin the blame on Captain Turner. Now, Turner was found that he had no responsibility in the inquest in Kinsale. There was an inquiry set up, the Mercy Inquiry, and it also found that he was not to blame. So Churchill um, had to withdraw his, his accusations, and but Turner never got the command of a, of a large ship afterwards. This unusual photograph is a, a plan. It was to salvage the Lusitania to try and prove what was in the cargo. This was a, a shoot, by the way, from the salvage ship on the surface, and it came right down to the bottom and then they would break into the ruin of the ship. But naturally, it was, it was an impractical idea. In Kinsale, this is a copy of a menu. It may be, it may be grisly in a way. They had a special lunch provided by the town council for the Lusitania salvage expedition. This was in 1935. The first real, I suppose, a successful attempt was by this man, John Light. Now, John Light was uh, an ex-American uh, Navy diver, and he raised funds to try and salvage the Lusitania. It, it failed, and he was succeeded then, who took over the ship, by Greg Bemis, who, who died on, uh, last year. Greg Bemis did salvage artifacts from the Lusitania. 
he ran into trouble with the authorities in Ireland that they had declared that the ship was a war grave and that nobody should interfere with it. But he did produce some of the cargo that wasn't there. This, these were World War One issue bullets. Uh, there were supposed to have been over two million of these on the ship, and they're still there because they didn't explode. This is a, a, the remains of a port hole that he salvaged as well from the wreck. Um, the, the first, I suppose, public memorial was put out in the old head by a local a committee there. And in Kinsale itself, then the building where the Lusitania inquest took place in 1915 is now hoses and an expedition, the remnants, I suppose, little bits and pieces of the, of the inquest and of the sinking itself. This is a fairly um, maybe sad photograph because it's on Friday next now, the anniversary. This is the, the funeral of the three victims of a Belgian Kinsale passing through the town. Over there on the left-hand side, you can see the temperance hall, the post office is down at the end. And that went up then up to St. Malto's Church. Um, this poor lady was described as an unknown uh, victim. And she was only identified, a lovely looking lady. She was Margaret Mackenzie. She was actually from Scotland. And she was coming home with her husband uh, on the ship. But unfortunately, they died uh, of Kinsale. Lots of books, obviously, written about Kinsale, if you want to look into it in more detail. Um, one of the, the other stories is maybe is this one, the story of Hugh Lane, the art collector, that he was supposed to have a priceless paintings in lead tubes. Lead, a, a, one lady raised funds, and this is one of the diving suits, but naturally they found nothing there. This is um, the one used by John Light. He, this was a, a compression chamber that could be lowered down to the ship and then the divers would live there maybe for a bit like space travel. They could survive there for 10 to 12 days and then come back up into a decompression chamber on, on the salvage boat. Uh, you may see two, uh, one or two of these around town put up by the History Society with the help of the Chamber of Tourism, just to remind people of bits and pieces about the, the story itself. Well worthwhile going out to the old head. While it's a private golf course, there is a lovely memorial built there on, on the, at the edge of the golf course by the local community. And the building on the right there is a, a, a reconstructed signal tower. And then in the, in the forefront there is a very impressive memorial with the names of all the passengers and crew are inscribed in that in a special memorial garden. And they also hope to have a, a museum built there over the next two or three years. Uh, if you're a stamp collector, watch out for one of these, the Wanderer, um, rescuing the people off the ship. If you're a collector of memorabilia, you still could find bits and pieces, maybe. They were brought up by the lady with the, the diver we saw a while ago and put on sale. This is a rather, I suppose, gruesome sort of a, a memorial. If you're a golfer, these are uh, the remains of a set of golf clubs made from one of the propellers of the Lusitania. They were a failure, you'd probably be glad to hear, because the metal was too soft and they were withdrawn from sale again. Though, going back to the, I suppose, to remind you again of what it was like that time, they, the people were so happy on the ship. The submarine had already sunk a number of other smaller boats earlier in the week, and unfortunately, its biggest prize was the Lusitania. So at two o'clock, on the 7th of May on Friday, we pause for a moment to say a prayer and lay some flowers at the graves of the people buried in Kinsale, and they do the same in Cove and the Old Head, and we hope you will join us. So thank you for listening to me. <laughs>